So ben, thanks so much for your time. Uh, ben, I think the, the, the opportunities of the informal uh, market on the continent are well understood. It just looks like exploiting that benefit from a company's perspective has been difficult. Why do you think so? It's, it's a great question. I think one of the, the biggest drivers behind this is a lack of appreciation and very actionable information on who uh, is purchasing certain kinds of products through informal channels. And there's new research out by the IMF. This reaffirms the, the lead in that you had in terms of the size of informal markets across uh, many of the largest and most exciting emerging economies on, on the continent where you have 40% of total economic activity happening through informal channels in places like Nigeria, Ethiopia, the DRC, Ghana, Tanzania, Mozambique, many, many other countries. And um, understanding um, where there is the greatest concentration of demand for mass, mar mass market uh, products, uh, particularly in consumer goods, like um, uh, personal care, household goods, beverages, and actually really understanding purchasing patterns, preferences, and overall potential demand is, is super important. And the fact that much of this is happening through informal channels and not being tracked through modern retail point of sale data makes it challenging for many companies to, to truly understand where their consumers are and how they're behaving. Mm. And I, I don't imagine that data will be available um, anytime soon in terms of the ability of people to actually track it. So how, how do we overcome that challenge? Well, the data is actually there and there's companies like ours, Frame, um, which we were a geospatial data and analytics firm focused exclusively on Africa with offices in Lagos and Nairobi. And what we do is take a very different lens to understanding African consumers where we rely on, on data that's directly captured from African households and merge that together with satellite imagery and deploy machine learning algorithms to understand and identify consumers down to hyper-local levels. And I'm talking about one square kilometer grids across almost the entire continent and being able to take a very multi-dimensional view of what consumers look like, what they're buying and what volumes and then can work with companies to actually understand how to optimize their distribution channels and their brand and marketing campaigns. So it's a very non-traditional way of harnessing what is reams and reams of big data that's actually available but locked up across the continent. And so what a couple of years ago felt like was impossible, uh, was far off into the future, is actually very possible and very actionable today. All right, but from a responsibility point of view, a lot of these uh, businesses in informal markets are very small. You know, they're run by the locals, but they're the bread and butter of the, uh, these locals there. So now you've got the risk of a big company wanting to come in and kill uh, the smaller man, essentially because of sheer scale and the power of its balance sheet. I mean, how do you balance that, whereby you have a multinational that can, you know, exploit growth prospects in an informal untapped market but you also have the small business that isn't at a loss because of this yeah so so there's definitely going to be that dynamic over time in the retail sector what i was speaking mostly towards are consumer facing companies that are in beverage industry or cons um, personal care household goods those kinds of companies that have mass market offerings that they are going to market through both uh, modern retail as, as well as traditional channels or informal channels. And so for there, it's, it's less, far less of a threat to the local kiosk provider, the mom and pop kind of shop that's at the corner of, uh, of, of most streets. And it's more about understanding that those are uh, very important opportunities for distributing product for, for mass market companies. And so actually understanding where there are concentrations of their target customers, even if it's down the pyramid, and we're talking about de-consuming households or e-consuming households uh, ac across the continent, that's very actionable information. So it's actually a win-win of identifying untapped distribution channels 
and then pushing product and optimizing distribution channels accordingly. So the retail shift will happen over time, but for consuming consumer facing companies, this is something that they need to really understand and optimize today. Those that do understand that and want to pursue this further, is there sort of like a do's and, and maybe don'ts list of how to go about, particularly here in South Africa, we've seen a lot of companies trying to expand across the continent and do business uh, in those informal markets and get burnt because there's a language and there's a style of business that's very different. So how do you do it? What's the best way to do it? Well, the, the companies that we work through have a couple of ingredients in common. Uh, some of the factors that you were talking about in terms of just really understanding the local market dynamics with either partnering with, with local entities that have decades of experience uh, or, or really focus on hiring local staff that are seasoned. Uh, but the, the additional component, which is actually where I think a lot of companies have gotten it wrong, um, or have a mixed track record over the last five or 10 years is actually not truly quantifying the total addressable market. And not just even in a national sense, but down to neighborhoods in major urban markets or understanding rural markets and truly knowing where their customers are, what kind of media they're consuming to be able to reach them through brand and marketing campaigns and then build their, their partnership model and their distribution channels accordingly. So starting from the bottom up in terms of where there is true demonstrable demand and buying power, and then feeding that into their go-to-market strategies. Like I said, I think that's where a number of companies took a, took a, um, a poor step or a misstep in terms of overestimating the overall aggregate demand, but not really understanding where it was um, in, in granular, hyper-local ways mm. um, and, uh, and segmenting the market accordingly.